Thanks for your company once again. Now, construction works on Lot 1 of the Eastern Corridor Road project is behind schedule due to failure of government to make funds available. The contract period was extended to March 2017 after contractors were unable to complete the project in December 2013. Now, with just a few days to the end of March, it's almost certain the roads will not be completed on schedule inspecting progress of work Volta Regional Minister Archibald Lecha said he was unhappy about the development and promised to push for the release of funds to complete the work. Fred Kwame Asari's report to join us. Works started on Lot 1 of the Eastern Corridor Road project in December 2011. The 45-kilometer road, which stretches from Esikuma Junction to Logba Alakbeti, is being funded by the government. Chinese firm GS International Developers Ghana Limited was expected to finish and hunt over the road in December 2013, but delay in payment left contractors only halfway through the project. The second and third lots of the roads are being constructed by the same company with funding from the Ghana Cocoa Board. About 58% of work has been done on lot 2, a 20-kilometer stretch which spans from Agate to Logba Alakwati, while the third lot, a 31.3-kilometer road from Logba Alakwati to Hohoi, is about 38% complete. GS International Developers Ghana Limited is confident of completing the lot 2 and 3 projects on time as the Ghana Cocoa Board is providing the necessary funds as expected. But the contractors lament they've wasted so much time on the Lot 1 project. Old people are spoiled, which okay. is new occupants. Yeah. Uh, labor, we need people, labor, yeah. salaries, whatever. Yeah. So it's a long delay. Yeah. It's still good for the contractors. It's true. Here right now we are losing all the time. So okay. we are complaining. We hope the government can pay us on a regular basis. Okay. So we can quickly com yeah, complete it. The Volta Regional Minister has also promised to ensure funds are disbursed for the delayed project. We are more than two years behind schedule. So we're going to try to address the financial, the funding challenges that uh, the contractor is facing. So whatever we've seen here, we're going to communicate with the ministry in Accra and the finance ministry and the roads, roads and highway ministry so that uh, whatever we can do to speed up the progress or work on this stretch of roads will, will be done. Meanwhile, defects detected at some portions of the Lot 1 project are being corrected. Fred Kwame Asari's report for Joy News. Well, let's uh, still stay on road development. Residents of Gold City, a uh, Gold City in the Thon Katamansa district, are appealing to the Roads and Highways Ministry to construct roads within the Gold City and its environs. Close to two decades, roads within the area would serve as alternative routes to part of a shaman. Tema, Bone and Beyond are yet to be tarred. Gulf City derived its name from the Gulf Coast close by, which once served as the main road to Adam. Chairman of Gulf City Residents Association, Douglas Asante, says the efforts over the years through the Tema Metropolitan and later Bone Katamanso District Assemblies have been fruitless. He tells Joy News that the road is unmotorable during the rainy season and extremely dusty in the dry season, causing respiratory-related diseases to residents. Because of the bad nature of our roads, uh, some vehicles have taken undue advantage. Uh, the trucks, uh, to say, uh, they drive recklessly and anytime we experience dust in our rooms in schools both private and commercial vehicle drivers who use golf city routes are forced to buy spare parts on monthly basis due to the deplorable nature of the road and you can see all the road is no good the gutter has been chewed when we for we can't go our cars are dirty on the road, the shock, the everything. As you can see, the big shock too. This is where they pass. This is where we work. People so, we want them. 
What hurts the most is that during the NDC administration, Afote Agbo visited this place and promised to fix the roads. Tools and equipment were brought here and after three days disappeared. The situation has led to poor patronage of people's businesses with few traders still struggling in the dust to make ends meet. Our problem is the dust. Two years ago, works on the road began, but I've never been completed. The situation is bad. I closed down my shop for some time. The dust is really worrying. We are losing customers due to the dust, and as a result, business has slowed down. So far, the only tarred road in the area is the Afutiabo Road, which connects Michelle Camp Road to Pong Barrier. Kwame Yankes reports for Joy News. Now let's move on to security issues. Police in the Ashanti region have vowed to track down each member of the pro-governing MPP vigilante group Delta Force uh, that attacked the Ashanti Regional Security Coordinator, George Ajay. Uh, about 200 members of the group last week assaulted Mr. Ajay because they claimed he did not help in the fight for the party's victory. Uh, Erastus Asaridongo has been following the story and joins, uh, joins us on the line with more. Hello, Rastas. Now, give us the breakdown. Let's get the latest on this. Well, Spanish, uh, the latest is that uh, the two groups, uh, the invisible forces, we have been speaking with their uh, leader this morning, and it uh, has been emphasized the point that uh, the Delta Force people have been going around apologizing to party elders. Um, they are trying to come together to apologize to the president, and they are trying to forge uh, a way ahead uh, so that whoever is appointed can have some peace to work. But when you speak with the Delta Force people, you are not getting that indication. They have been speaking on some local radio stations, still enforcing the point that they are not reneged. Uh, they are, are not taking a back bench. They still insist that it's not like uh, the gentleman. In fact, I have some uh, information to confirm that there are some individuals behind this whole thing, some party, uh, original party leaders uh, who are uh, pushing uh, and turning and, and, you know, manipulating the Delta Force to their advantage. And so currently, as we speak, police have arrested um, uh, five people. They first arrested the leader of Delta Force. Uh, who is uh, Nana Poki. They arrested another guy at the weekend, and now they have uh, five people arrested uh, so far. Mm. And so they have been charged with um, uh, assault. assault and then caution on lawful harm. All right. And Erastus, now this uh, man they want in, pl in the place of uh, Mr. George J. is he in any way linked to their group, or uh, these are members of the Delta Force who are just you know, pushing for him, or he's part of the Delta Force? He's part of the Delta Force. In fact, he, uh, at, at one point in time, uh, he was coordinating uh, all the uh, vigilante groups as a security wing of the NPP. And so this is somebody that um, even some members of the Delta Force and some members of the Invisible Forces have wanted him to head uh, that institution, uh, the original security liaison office. But I, I guess the president took that decision because uh, he senses that there should be a neutral person uh, to hold that office. There should be some level of uh, qualification. There should be some level of uh, trust and respect for the person who holds that office. And so um, he did not go uh, with their request, but chose uh, Mr. George Ajay, who is totally alien uh, to the vigilante culture. And that is what is uh, creating all this. So the Mohammed guy who they are vouching for is a member of the Delta Force and is somebody that the, the two groups, the two vigilante groups, uh, support that he becomes uh, the regional security liaison office. 
but the invisible forces are taking a back bench because they say uh, whoever the president appoints, they will go with him. Mm. But then the Delta Force are saying, since he's a member, they will not allow this person to go on and work. Well, Erastus, we know that uh, leaders of the Invincible Force yesterday uh, paid a ketsi call at Minxia. Uh, do we have any updates on that? And has uh, the chief, or I mean the Asante Hene, or any of his representatives been commenting on this matter? Well, I learned they went to Minxia uh, to present a petition that the Invincible Forces uh, to tell Otufo they want Mr. George to hold office as Ritna to be the zone officer, but they were not allowed uh, All right, to meet him. Uh, All right, Erastus, yeah. thank you for, for those updates. But I'm joined on the phone now by ASP Yawin Ketia where He speaks uh, for the police in the Ashanti region. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my sister. Uh, ben is here. But we know that five... Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Ben, sorry. This is a little... We, we, it's, it's understandable. So yes. So forgive me. All right, it's okay. It's understandable. But uh, we know that uh, five members of the group... Uh, we know that three people turned themselves in yesterday, but what exactly do you mean when you, you say you're vowing to crack uh, or track down all suspects? What, what the command mm. means is that anybody who is criminally associated with that act, we will ensure that he is brought to book as stipulated by the laws of the Republic of Ghana. Mm. Virtually. How do you intend to do that, sir? I mean, what, what's, what's your method uh, of, of uh, tracking Tell down all these people? I'm just wondering how you intend to do that. Um, first, uh, which the Ashanti Regional Police Commander, DCOP, Kenyabua, has come out to appeal to them to report themselves to help in investigation. In other words, those who want uh, members of that illegal group to report themselves. Like the last three, the last three reported themselves, the last three on the press release, mm. but the first two were arrested by the police. They should take a clue from the last three and report themselves. If they don't do that, then wherever they are, we book them out and uh, uh, take uh, and continue with the investigation. If they are found culpable, we charge them, present them before court. Uh, that is uh, that is it. All right, Mr. Yabwa, now we've heard some of the members justifying uh, their existence, their roles, and their activities. And uh, prior to the election, uh, the former IGP... Uh, yes, uh, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I said it, come again. All right, I'm saying that we've heard some of the members of these vigilante groups yes. justifying their existence, justifying their roles and activities. And prior to the elections, uh, we had the former IGP, John Kudalo, uh, actually advocating or asking that these uh, vigilante groups be, you know, disbanded. But here we are seeing them after elections, uh, you know, uh, doing all these things all over the country. So what yes. uh, exactly are you doing in terms of moving on, apart from arresting these people, what are we doing to enforce uh, that uh, directive that was given by the former IGP? Yeah. Um, before a group can be recognized, what I know is the group, uh, that association or group, must follow legal procedure. Mm. Uh, can we find this name uh, in the Register General uh, record? Me and you know that they are not registered. Mm. So it is a legal, illegal body. So um, uh, um, that is how I simply see it. It's illegal body. And more so, even if it is legally constituted, nobody in the Republic of Ghana, even, uh, excuse me to say, with all due respect, if you are even the head of any security services or even his assistant to the president himself, mm. nobody is above the law. Yeah, Mr. So Nketiah, yeah, that's why I'm asking. That's why I'm yes. asking. I understand uh, uh, that these groups are, uh, like you're saying, not supposed to be there. But 
I'm asking, that's why I'm asking what the police in the Ashanti region is going to do, for example, because uh, we know that these oh, okay, uh, okay. various but forces have... But, uh, please, yeah. please let me land. I, 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 I plead with you. We, we know that they have uh, other branches in parts of the country. Now, I'm saying that setting up this, these groups in the first place uh, was a non-starter for many people. And so uh, the, the former IGP directed prior to the election that oh, we... I'm not getting you, Dennis. I'm not getting you. Well, uh, apologies for that. I was just asking what uh, the Ashanti Regional Police Command is going to do to stop these groups from... Oh, very well, very well. Very yes. well, very well, uh, Gando. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is... Um, We've already made the necessary uh, arrangements uh, not to, uh, in order to prevent the future occurrence. I know other regions do, they, and districts will do likewise. Mm -hmm. That is how we work. Uh, apart from that, uh, we are inviting all to come to know that there are laws in the Republic of Ghana. So these are all forms of uh, 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 ways of making people know. You know, when somebody does something which is wrong and you don't do anything, people will be emboldened. Mm. And it's, uh, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. All this right. is what mm. we are trying to avoid. All right, Mr. Ketiaeba, thanks for your time. Mm. There seems to be a problem with the line, so I don't want to... Uh, keep hitting on 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 the question the, the the question I wanted an answer to, but we'll call you uh, in a subsequent bulletin. But let's stay a bit longer on this issue. Now I'm joined uh, in the studio by a security analyst, Dr. Ansa Kwei. Thanks for joining us, sir. So Thank you've you. been here. I mean, you've heard our reporter from the Ashanti region, and you've heard uh, the, the police who speaks on behalf of the Ashanti Regional Command. Uh, have we failed as a country, obviously, in, in, in dealing with this issue of vigilante groups? Like I was asking him, uh, the former IGP prior to the elections said, you know what, uh, political parties, you must you know, take the power from these groups. You must rid, rid them of that authority they have to do some of these things. But here we are. A few months later, we, we, we know what happened in Kintapo. It is alleged that uh, the people who are actually uh, manning the place are from the invincible forces. We've had school feeding programs interrupted by all these people. What should we do as a country now to deal with this once and for all? If you don't mind, let's just go back a bit. Mm. You may re uh, recollect that when, pres when then President Obama first assumed the presidency, Obama, he came to Africa. And then when he came to Africa, he chose Ghana as the point of destination. And at that, on that occasion, he made a very, very important statement. Mm. He made the point that we need Africa to build our institutions. Mm. We should stop relying upon redeemers and saviors to save our nation, and that we must build our institutions. And the fact of the matter is that Africa has sent to of democracy. There is democracy everywhere, elections, party formation, and all that. But the fact is that we are not getting everything right in many of these. Mm -hmm. and, and one such area is what we are just talking about, these uh, group, groups like this. As a matter of fact, they are not entirely illegal. Mm -hmm. Anybody must take charge of his security, though that's the duty of the police. So it is okay for a party, a politician, to have a group of followers who see the security of their group. Okay. Not, uh, uh, whether they are registered, registered or not, that's not actually make them illegal. Uh, yes, I, yeah. I, ap I appreciate that because I was just going to say that obviously we are allowed to form, uh, I mean, very, yeah. uh, we Spectrum have security. all these clubs, yes. associations springing up. But this is the point. Should we get to this point where political parties should take charge of their own security? Can't we have yeah. a security system that will provide so that we can, you know, avert some of these things? The point I want to uh, uh, make is that they are not uh, illegal, but mm. the parties must be in control mm. of these groups. The parties must be so done that they can regulate them. And that's why I, I, I talk about institutionalization. We must work for our parties well. And that's one area where we are failing. This is not the first time this has happened. It has happened in previous uh, uh, administrations. Uh, administrations. So it's a failure that we have in our system. Our parties are not really in control of their followers. That's one very big problem. In management studies, you must always ensure as a leader that your followers are really following you. And the parties are not really in control. And therefore, this is one area we must look at. And perhaps the way out is for the uh, law enforcement agencies and the police to be very strict with the law, to be very impartial with the application of the law. On past occasions, nothing seems to have been done to such people. Mm. So it's, it's become a tradition that if your party wins, 
you take them into your hands. And that's what we have to care. That's what we have, we have to actually stop. And so law enforcement has been very strict. So that's just an example to deter others from doing the similar thing. All right, but <laughs> this takes me to my next question on police reaction. Yeah. Uh, we know that this happened on Friday. Yeah. And um, the video is clear. You can see faces. You can see people. Uh, maybe they've gone into hiding. But with, with particular reference to uh, this Delta Force uh, issue where mm -hmm. members attacked uh, the security coordinator in the Ashanti region, do you think the police uh, reacted swiftly or in a manner they should have? They reacted swiftly in saving the person who was mm. under attack. Mm. It was obvious that if they had not salvaged him, he might have actually suffered worse than. So on that score, they did well in swiftly reacting to save the person of the personality that was being pitted against. But I think that they have been too, too slow in terms of prosecution and making a public show of the offenders. Five days, people are known, people have been sent to court. And this idea of trying to settle it behind the scenes will, will not really work. And in fact, this serves as an encouragement to other groups, other parties to follow. So if the police have been very swift with prosecution, I mean, that's what I mean. No, there are enough laws to actually get a, a, a tackle them, mm. assault and all that. And again, destruction of public property and a lot more. So they are certainly those people actually breach uh, our, our, our criminal code. And this very, there is enough basis to send them to court. So I wonder why so long after, so many days after the incident, nobody has still appeared in court on, on, on any of those charges. Do you think that uh, sometimes traditional and political interference, I mean, within the police structure itself, is, is, is hampering, our, or, 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 yeah, hampering our progress in, it in does this seem, issue? It does seem that traditional interference, political interference, Again, considerations of politics actually sometimes may seem to influence the police, and that is what is wrong. They must be shown to be impartial. It doesn't matter whether the party is in power or not. So far as people are offending from within the party, they must be very swift, and that's to actually nip this in the bud. But so far as they pay attention to other considerations, like what you have mentioned, traditional considerations, political party considerations and the like, so far as they do that, this will never cease. Because next time around, those who have won will also think it's their turn mm. to actually wreak vengeance. And, and that's why this has been ongoing. Yes. And so, Dr. Kwe, we've seen this happening now. The NPP won the elections in 2016. And we've seen uh, various vigilante groups, like I mentioned earlier, the school feeding program taking over, yeah. uh, the, the, the Kintampo incident now with the regional uh, security uh, coordinator in the Ashanti region. What should we do to prevent a retaliation? Because it, it, the cycle seems unending. So uh, in, in this one says, well, in the previous administration you did it. So it's possible that uh, the pro-NDC vigilante groups are just waiting for an opportunity to get into power and then also, you know, p do yeah. these things. So yeah. what should we do to end that cycle once and for all? A number all? of things. One is just one is what I, what I mentioned. The police was very swift with prosecution. Mm. Very, very swift with prosecution. And so far, that has not been forthcoming. In all the instances that you cite, there has been no prosecution of anybody. Mm -hmm. So one is that the police is very, very swift on, on prosecution. Two, the general public must actually hold the political leaders responsible. I regret that everybody says the president come and denounce them. Mm. That is not the solution. We must all be one in actually asserting that the fact that you have won an election does not mean that you can take the law into your hands. But Dr. Kwe, uh, you, you are saying that for you that is not the case, but uh, in initially you mentioned that leaders must have control over their followers. Yes. And so in this case, I'm sure for those calling on the president to speak, they, 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 are, they are hoping that he would have some level of influence and they would have some level of respect for him so that when he comes out to speak emphatically, I know he's spoken in general terms on these issues, but... With reference to this Delta Force uh, issue, if he comes out to speak clearly, then probably we could be making a headway. These people were acting as party agents. They claimed to be groups within a political party. Mm. I expect that party to speak to the issue. Not the, not not the president. Not necessarily the president. Because you put the president to the He's going to actually condemn those who actually struggled to get him into power. That's what they're arguing. And, and he, but, may but, but he may or may not do that. Uh, but is that but wrong? Party, if you brought me into power and you're doing uh, the wrong thing or you're flouting the laws of the land, shouldn't I put you right? Should I be afraid of that? He's not necessarily being afraid. But the point is that uh, people don't necessarily buy the hand that feeds them. And therefore, we must expect the parties to actually control them. Could that be a reason why we are where we are in Ghana? Take, for example, mm. hawkers. That's hawkers on the streets. Uh, take, for example, 
people who do uh, things they are not supposed to do in this country. And we are we all, you know, I don't think you can bite the hand that feeds you. And so could that be why we are here, where we if are today? If I may go back a little, this is the first time this is happening. Mm. Even in this administration, this is the first time. It has happened repeatedly in our politics. Ask yourself, why does this persist? It is because the leaders, the presidents at the time, are not able to bite the hand that fed them. That's a simple point. And that's my so, point. And that's so, why I say it's so wrong. If, so if, for example, in the initial stages, let's say uh, the first time it occurred, the president was able to bite the hand or the hands that fed him, we could have ended this once yes, and for all. Yes, but he didn't. And other okay. presidents too are not and, able to do it. And that is why people are advocating for President Kufuado to do it. As a matter of fact, there is a law. The police are supposed to enforce the law. These people have actually breached the law. What is the police waiting for? What does the law say? Mm. Assault, destruction of public property, you must end that in court. Why are they not in court? That is the question. Why do you expect the president before you uh, before to talk before I, talk I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the police is waiting for the president to talk before uh, they. But think those so calling for the president to speak. Those why, why calling for why must they to the president? Well, they're calling for the president to speak because since he was declared winner to the point where he was inducted into office, we've seen this, uh, you know, occasionally, time and time again. And so uh, those people believe that if the president, for example, comes out to speak, uh, and 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 people will know that. He's not for what is happening because you know that one of the uh, the mantra of the opposition against President Okufado was that he was violent and he had to come out and say he's not the violent. Time to the same thing happened. That's why I said this has a history. Mm. It's, it's not happening now. It happened during the era of the uh, NDC too. Don't forget that. It's been part of our politics. That's why I would rather prefer to say that uh, this thing, we must go to institutions. Political parties must, must be held accountable. Civil society must be much more active in condemning these activities, and the law enforcement agencies must prosecute. Simple. Mm. Yes. The president may decide to speak to them, not publicly, but privately. But the party structure must be in control of their people. These are not acting as personal agents of the president. They are acting as support agents of the party, and the party must disown them or bring them under ruin, bring them under control. So I think there is enough that needs to be done. And I don't really share the sentiment that the way that Mr. President coming and publicly condemned them. Sure. I think that has not happened, and I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. I think he's come, he's come close enough to condemn such. And in fact, in his speech on this, he did ask the law enforcement agencies to stiff the rule of law, to stiff the rule of law, so that should be done. All right, uh, Dr. Ansakwe, before I, I let you go, uh, you mentioned that prosecution uh, should be the way to go. Could that be the final, uh, you know, final straw that breaks the camel's back? Should that be the final thing that will probably make uh, these, me the members of these groups say, okay, enough is enough. We know that, uh, for example, one of our members has been charged and is in prison for assault and this, uh, could, could in, we see indeed, uh, a progress it there? It solve so many problems. They may have a case that they don't really favor the appointee, the one appointed. That's very legitimate, if that is their feeling. But in every system, there are ways and means of going through this. You go through the right channel to seek redress, to seek his withdrawal. Mm. They disregard the right channels and resort to violence, physical assault, attack, destruction of property. So the way out is prosecution. If some is one, one or two are prosecuted, or all of them are prosecuted, and they suffer the consequence for these criminal activities, the rest will, will learn the lesson. Because they will see that the party, the presidency, their service to the party in times past would not save them. And therefore, this will come to a halt. All right. Now, Dr. Kwe, you're a security analyst, not uh, a sociologist, but I just want your opinion on this. Some have also raised the arguments that uh, these young men uh, will end up in vigilantism because there are no jobs. They don't have anything to do. For example, if they had jobs or if they were sitting in offices or performing uh, a certain you know, or profession or were engaged in a certain skill or, or anything, then they wouldn't uh, be where they were. Uh, you know? I don't share that argument. As a matter of fact, they, some of them have jobs. Some of those mentioned, one has been mentioned to be a, a, a mechanic. So they have their own jobs. So I don't think that unemployment is what led them to that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, no, not so what all. exactly is leading people to vigilantism then? The failure of worker parties to be, to be in control. Mm. Ignorance. Like I said, I spoke about what expert Obama said, that in Africa we need to build institutions. Mm. And our parties are not being well built. In fact, this is the genesis of civil war. Because groups like this actually resort to violence any time, and then before you realize they have actually gone violent, and the nation would be on flame. Mm -hmm. So there's the need to act, actually act right, to act the right way towards things like this. 
and I think prosecution is the way out. I don't think that unemployment is the reason for that sort of thing at all. Mm -hmm. But the parties are not in control. All they right. must be prosecuted. Right. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Ansakwe. is a security analyst, and we've been talking uh, about vigilantism on the back of what happened in Kumasi with the Delta Force attacking uh, Mr. George Ejie. And he thinks that prosecution is the way out in dealing with vigilantism and does not agree with those who say that unemployment may be causing uh, this situation we have in this country. You're watching John News Desk with me, Benis Abu Beid. We'll take a quick break. When I come back, we'll bring you more stories. Please stay with us.